you guys can see me. Okay, I can see now what's going on. All right, so, sorry, I've been trying to test out my tablet. I think it's time for me to admit that maybe it's served its lifespan and I need to commit to this iPad, which I'm not really an Apple person, so I'm not ready to do that, but that's okay. Um, okay, so yeah, so um, a few of you have commented on some of my videos about um, the Versamark video I did. Um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm in love with foiling and you guys know that, but I do do a lot of heat embossing. Maybe I just don't show as much on camera. So I wrote some notes here, just answering some basic questions about heat embossing. So I thought I would go through with those with you guys today. All right, so let's talk about what is heat embossing. So heat embossing is basically when you take these tiny little fragments of of plastic or wax, I don't know how you want to describe it, and you um, melt it, okay? Now, there is different embossing. There's embossing folders. There's embossing with styluses. There's all different kinds of embossing. So we are um, specifically going to talk about heat embossing today, where you take heat to it. Um, there's many different kinds of embossing powders, um, you'll see different ways of storing embossing powders. One of the biggest ones is people keep them in these little containers now. Um, you have different types of spoons or scoops you can use. So we have these little kind of glitter spoons. Here's another style scoop. Um, this is a brand new one I just got from Tonic. So it has kind of a spoon on one end and a scoop on the other end. Um, so whatever works for you in terms of storing it. One thing I will say is when you store it, like I store all of my little jars, a lot of them I do store upside down and I have some kind of a swatching system on mine. So some of them I've swatched the lids, some of them I swatched on paper and then I cut out the paper and um, embossed it and then cut out the paper and put it on the bottom of the jars. But this way you can see your embossing powders. You can see the colors of them. It doesn't hurt to store them upside down. Some of them you can't store upside down like the tonic ones um, just because of the little decorative head. This does pop off if you want to pop it off um, just depending on how you put it in there. There's another one with swatch. But I keep these guys. So if you guys um, these come in like sneakers, shoe boxes, and I keep these in the drawers with my embossing powders because you don't want them to get moisture. You don't want them exposed to light. You want to keep them in a drawer, someplace where they're going to be safe. Um, and obviously out of way of children, pets, things like that. Um, they may get clumpy every once in a while. That does not hurt them. I don't know that embossing powder actually gets old. I have a lot of original embossing powder that I probably have had for 10 years and have not had any issues with it. So in terms of storing it, keep it in this jar, keep it in an area where it's not exposed to any kind of moisture, definitely no moisture and so on. Hi, Helen, thank you. Okay. Um, in terms of types of embossing powders, I'm going to talk about a couple of them today. First of all, there's every color of embossing powder that you can think of out on the market these days. Back in the day, it used to be black, white, and clear. Um, so many companies now have colored embossing powders. There's glittered embossing powders. There's clear embossing powder. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about ultra-thick embossing powder, detailed embossing powders, um, transparent embossing powders. So there's all kinds of different embossing powders. If you are just starting out, there's a couple that I'm going to recommend if you're just starting out and building up your stash. So um, two of these are from the same company. Okay. So I would recommend a very good opaque white 
because anytime you're doing embossing on, say, black cardstock, opaque white comes very um, in handy when you're doing like sentiments on black cardstock um, and a clear. And you want a really good ultra fine clear. So both of these are from Brutus Monroe. Um, I have raved for a long time. If you want to build up your stash, you can go over and join the Brutus Monroe monthly embossing powder club. I believe it's $8. So to me, that breaks down to $5 and $3 for shipping. That's how I look at it. You're not really paying $8. Um, but the Alabaster White is their solid white embossing powder, and it is super opaque. And then their Icicle is their Ultra Fine Clear. If you have clear, you can emboss almost anything, okay? Um, so those are the two that I would recommend having. And then some kind of glitter, whether it be, here's another one. This is called Sparkling Snowflake. Not sponsored by Brutus Monroe, by the way. Just love their products. Um, but I have many different companies. So here is... Um, Hero Arts, I have WoW, I have Rangers. There's a lot out there. You, there's, there's, there's no rules when it comes to heat embossing. One company will work with the other company. You can mix, you can match, you can use whatever you want, okay? So if you're just starting out, I would say get Alabaster White, get some kind of a glitter, and you want it to be embossing powder, not just glitter. It has to be glittered embossing powder. There is a difference. Um, and clear. So those are the three that I would start out with. If you have a clear, like I said, you can emboss anything. Hi, Sally. All right. In terms of, and we'll go through these different embossing powders in a second. In terms of um, other tools that you need for embossing, you're going to need a good embossing ink. There's a lot of ink companies out there which claim that they are embossing powder inks. You probably already have the one that most of you know I'm going to recommend, which is Versamark, okay? You don't need to buy any kind of special ink pad. If you have Versamark ink, you have an embossing ink pad. This is a clear, sticky ink. I believe it's glycerin-based. Um, you can see my ink pad's a little shabby looking, but works great. Um, I started out with all kinds of different embossing ink pads. I've tried Perfect Medium. I've tried glue pads. There's a lot of companies out there. You don't need them. If you have this, you don't need anything else. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. Do not go out and spend any extra money on embossing powders. One is no different than the other. This is the only one you need. I mean on ink. Sorry. Okay. Um, basic cleanup. You want to have a couple of simple tools. One, I buy these super cheap coffee filters. Here's a hundred in here. I think I got it for two bucks maybe. Coffee filters are great, easy cleanup. When you're dumping your embossing powder, and you'll see me do that a couple times today, it's very easy to pick this up, fold it in, and put it back into your, and funnel it back into your little container. A lot of people like to use, um, you know, paper on their desk, folded paper. That's fine as well. I just like the embossing powders because when I'm done, I can crumple this up and throw it away and then I'm not cross-contaminating any of my embossing powders. Some kind of anti-static tool. Now, this one was big a little while back. I don't know why some of the other uh, YouTubers stopped using it. Maybe because it smells a little bit like baby powder. I think because I'm used to it now, I really don't notice it. It does smell like baby powder. Um... There is embossing bags out there, embossing buddies. There, uh, you could actually take a little pantyhose, hi Terry, and fill it with cornstarch and it will do the same thing. And I've done that before. So any kind of anti-static tool will work. Um, I also have a little like brush that I use to sweep. So I have a big brush and I have a small brush. And the small brush is for little fine details of embossing powder that we need to just kind of flick out of the way. You're not late, Terry. It's fine. Um, so those are some basic supplies. Um, heat tools. There's a couple different heat tools on the market. There's the Ranger heat tool, which has a high and a low setting. One is just heat. One is going to be heat with air. Um, I don't have that one. There's like the Nicole brand. There's a blue one. There's a pink one. I started off with that one. It works fine. If you can get yourself a Wagner, there's two types of Wagners. There's this one, which just turns on and off. And then there's one that has a high and a low speed setting. What you do not want to use is a hair dryer. You cannot use a hair dryer. A hair dryer produces absolutely too much force and you will blow everything off of your desk and just make a giant mess. 
Now, essentially what these tools do is they are an industrial heat tool. So again, remember in the beginning I said what you're doing when you're heat embossing is you're melting tiny, tiny microscopic pieces of wax, plastic. And so what this heat tool does, and this gets super hot, you'll notice when I do my videos, I do not let Leah come near this. Um, you will burn yourself if you touch this. And a lot of them have like a plastic um, protective cover on them. They have a stand so you can protect yourself. When you're working, you'll notice I'm working on a glass mat. You want to always protect yourself. So in the drawer next to me, there's a little basket. So I can literally throw this in the basket. I don't have to worry about it touching anything or burning anything. I picked up one of these guys from, um, oh, it's like super stuck to my desk from Michael's for a couple dollars. It's a silicone holster. And because the top of my desk is glass, this sticks and then this just sits right in it. And I have it hanging off my desk. But again, it's silicone, so it's not gonna burn. It has a little um, air escape holes there, but it's not gonna burn and I can just leave it setting in there, okay? When you are not using your heat gun, please, 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 please unplug it. I know a lot of people don't. Um, we, you don't ever want to have a situation where, you know, you just forgot to unplug it and something, you know, melts. It's super, super hot. Um, in terms of all the heat guns that are out there, there really isn't a big difference. I did a video years ago comparing the Nicole to the Wagner. The difference is this heats up faster. So if you're going to be doing specialty heat embossing on specialty paper, for instance, vellum, this is going to heat up faster. You're going to have a little bit less warping with it. But again, if you're just starting out, this is a $40 or $50 heat gun. The $20 um, one from Nicole brand is just as good if you're just starting out. And you can use a coupon a lot of times and get that discounted or even find a used one that works fine. Um, so that's the basic equipment you're gonna need. Um, in terms of paper, there's really no rules with paper. You can use almost any paper. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of examples today. So we have regular white, we have black. I'm gonna do vellum. I have some foils here, some glossy card stock. Um, and then I also have some embossable window plastic. Now, obviously plastic and heat don't generally go together, um, but this is embossable window plastic. So we'll just do some experimenting and emboss on some of these things. You know what? I think I saw a scrap piece of Yupo paper over here. Why not? Here we go. So we'll do that too. So let's get into the different things you can do with embossing powders, right? I'm just going to cut some of this vellum down just for demonstration purposes. I was trying to do some testing on my my Surface tablet, which is normally what I film on. And it's, I don't know, it's just been giving me a hard time lately. So I'm on my iPad, so I didn't really cut any paper up. So that's my fault. Um, and I'm just going to cut a couple of two-inch strips here of that. We'll do some black. And I'm not using any of my good paper. This is kind of like scrap paper. That's another thing that's nice is um, you can really, like I said, emboss on almost anything. However, the thicker your cardstock, the better. That is true because you'll have less warping. But we'll see how these turn out because I'm just really just doing some samples for you guys today. Okay, now remember when I said if you have if you have clear embossing powder, you can have almost any color you want. So let me just clarify that. Um, there is types of inks you can use if you don't have a certain embossing powder. So a lot of people don't buy black embossing powder. And the reason they don't buy black embossing powder is because if you use a good black ink like this VersaFine Claire ink, it's a pigment ink. So it stays juicy long enough that when you go to emboss with it, it's already going to be, um, it's already black. So you don't, you just need a clear embossing uh, powder. So I'm going to show you guys that. I'm just going to grab some stamps off my desk here. So here is a nice solid cowboy and his son. 
And I'm just gonna stamp this out with black ink before I do any embossing. I want to use my anti-static tool. The anti-static tool is going to save a lot of embossing mistakes. Um, some people also take a dryer sheet or a Swiffer sheet and use that. Swiffer sheets are great too for cleaning up. I have them behind my desk. I just forgot to grab them. All right, so this ink stays, um, stays so that it's embossable for a few minutes. And I'm just gonna use the clear on this. And I'm using Ranger's Ultra Fine Clear here. Okay. Now that's the fun part, the magic, is when you go to emboss. Now what I wanted to mention is um, you want to make sure that when you're embossing regular embossing powder that the image is glossy. So I don't know if you guys can see there. It's pretty glossy, but it looks kind of bumpy, right? So that means that I didn't put enough embossing powder on there or I didn't heat it long enough. So if it ever looks bumpy, you just want to leave that heat on there a little bit. You don't want to overcook it. You can burn... Um, embossing. It's very easy to do. So we're going to do a little more samples. I'm going to keep using the same stamp set because it's pretty easy. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a regular pigment ink and I'm going to stamp this out again. Let me make sure my stamp is fully dried and cleaned up here. And again, I'm going to take my anti-static tool Don't worry, that'll dust right off when you're done. And today I'm going to use the Delicata Gold Glitz Ink. Again, it's a pigment ink, so it stays wet for a little bit and long enough time for the embossing particles to stick to it. So because I already have so many pigment inks, so if you have the Distress Oxide inks, if you have actually any Distress ink, because Distress inks stay wet for a while, they will emboss. Um, generally, dye inks dry too quickly. I'm a dye ink fan because I like how fast they dry. You really can't use dye inks unless you stamp over the dye ink with Versamark, and I'll show you that as well in a second. So here I stamped it out in gold. Notice I didn't run right to the embossing powder. I just gave it a second, cleaned off my stamp. Okay, now you can see that it's fully coated and this is clear embossing powder and we're gonna heat it up. Now, if you want this to be a little quicker and not warp your paper, let your heat gun heat up for a second. So I'm gonna let that go for a second or two. Then I'm gonna bring it to the paper. Now you can see there that it's clear, but it has that gold underneath. You can do that with any ink that you have. So if you use a stamping platform, it makes it a little easier. So let's say I want to use the same stamp. How am I going to do this? Let me just butt this in this corner here because I want to make sure I stamp it in the exact same spot. All right. So I have my stamp in there. I'm going to take my anti-static tool again. The camera's in a weird place on this iPad, so I have to remember to stay in frame. Okay, anti-static tool's done. Now let's say I want to use a dye ink. Like I said, dye inks dry pretty quickly. They're the opposite of pigment inks. So, there we go. Here's a dye ink from Stampin' Up! Shaded Spruce. This happens to be on my desk. I'm going to make sure my paper's in the corner. I'm going to stamp that down. Now... If I were try to heat emboss this right now, 
it might stick because the ink is pretty wet. But a lot of times what happens is by the time you get your embossing powder to the paper, it's dry already, okay? So what you wanna do is leave your stamped image in there, clean it up really well, okay? And now we're gonna put Versamark on it. Versamark's clear, it's gonna sit on top of it. I cannot tell you how many times I did not clean my stamps and I got a dirty Versamark pad. It's fine, it cleans off with a little paper towel. It has happened, not a big deal. Okay, so now we're gonna stamp right over the image. So this is stamped in green. Now we're gonna stamp over it with the Versamark. What the Versamark does is it adds that sticky layer. It's transparent, so it's gonna see right through to your color. Hi, Dee Dee. And now we can go in with our clear ink again. Okay. And now we're going to heat it up. And look at that coverage. So now we have, the, I know it's hard to see it looks black, but it's actually dark green. But any color you have in terms of ink, as long as you are using a repositionable stamp platform, you can stamp over it in clear and make any color an embossing an embossing um, thing. So let me show you that again. I'm gonna do it this time, I'm gonna do it in glitter. So, um, what was I working on yesterday? I have nothing but green ink on my desk. Oh, I was doing Christmas trees. <laughs> Um, all right, so here, here I'm going to use this VersaFine Claire pig, uh, pigment ink. So I'm going to show you that. This should ideally stick on its own because it's the pigment ink. Pigment inks are, are kind of sticky. They sit on top of the paper for a while. Ooh, it's a nice bright neon green. All right, so we're going to do this one in neon green. And I'm going to show it to you guys using some glitter embossing powder. All right, can you see the glossy shine? There you go. Okay, so this was using a dye ink, stamping over it with Versamark. This was using a pigment ink, Versafine Claire's. All of these inks are very easy to use when it comes to heat embossing. Um, I'm going to do the glitter embossing powder. I'm just going to keep moving my paper down here. So I'm going to clean my pad off. I almost didn't clean it off. Clean my stamp off. Okay. We want to use our anti-static tool. And again, one is no different than the other. Any anti-static tool will work. You don't need six of them. You don't need to buy what's cool and trendy. They all work the same. We're using our Versamark ink. It's clear and sticky. And I have some, what do I have on the desk here? I have some green glitter. You know what? I'm going to use the gold glitter. This is Nouveau's gold glitter, which is super sparkly. So pretty. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way, and I'm going to grab a little coffee filter. You can see where that image is. This is super, super sparkly. The Ranger Tinsel embossing glitters are super sparkly as well. Okay, and then this is where the little brush comes in. If you have a little stray piece, you just wipe it away. Sometimes a little flick will take it off as well. Then we move all of this out of the way before we bring our heat tool in. and glitter and 
embossing. Let's also do that on black so you can see that again. Now there's transparent and there's opaque glitters. So you want to look into that when you're buying them. I bought some transparent ones and I'm like, oh, what did I get? Hi, Susan. Um, so I like to get, for me, I like really glittery and opaque when I do embossing powders. Transparent ones, just, it's not worth it to me. Oops, I forgot my embossing buddy. So let's see how this works out. And I just stuck my finger in it. All right, so because I forgot my embossing buddy, there is little strands of glitter all over here. I like using glitter embossing powders over using regular glitter. The embossing powders seem to stay pretty contained where when you use regular glitter, it just goes wherever it wants to go. Susan broke her wrist in five places. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Susan. Austin, Texas. Look at how nice that embossed. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. All right. So I think you guys can get the basics of heat embossing here. Um, I wanted to show you some cool techniques that I think, once you realize the basics of embossing. So I like doing embossing because if there is an image that I need to pop on the page, a lot of people do it for sentiments. That's why I like doing heat embossing. I love glitter embossing. Like I said, to me, it's a little neater than using regular glitters. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you was a couple different techniques that I've done with heat embossing that you may or may not find use in. Let's get my stuff out of the way here. Okay, so Jennifer McGuire just did a video on one that I haven't done in forever. Where did my silver paper go? I don't know if you guys caught her video. If you didn't, go check it out after this. There we go. She takes... Hold on, I want to get a really pretty stamp for this. a penny black stamp. I don't know what it's called, but it's got cool trees on it. And I'm just going to use a little piece of this Crafter's Companion foil. And again, inking it up with my Versamark. And if I confuse the terms Versamark and Versafine, I'm sorry. When I'm stamping with the clear ink, it's Versamark. Uh, no, Susan, if you do that, the glitter will blow away. You have to use embossing powder with the glitter because it has a special adhesive property built into it. You can try it, but I don't think it's going to stick. Hi, Renee. Okay, we're not critiquing my stamping here. We're just critiquing my heat embossing because I didn't put a piece of paper over this before I thought about rubbing it down. Nor did I use my anti-static tool. Oh, this is going to be a mess. We'll see how this looks. All right, let's take some clear. Oh yeah. When you don't use your anti-static tool, everywhere that you touched, especially on this uh, glossy paper, do you see all of that? That's what happens when you don't use your anti-static tool. So this is, at this point, going to be a hot, hot mess. I'm going to keep going.
You can see my fingerprints in it. Ugh. Okay, so let's heat this up. Let's see what we get. So again, you know that it's done when it turns all shiny. You do not want to touch it right away because it will burn you. And so now it looks like we have this kind of icicle tree. It almost looks like we ran it through an embossing folder, but we didn't. We just put clear embossing over it. So let's try that again on a piece of matte cardstock. Now this one has a little bit of texture to it. We'll see if it works, but I'm going to just anti-static powder tool this side. This should come out pretty neat with the textures, I think. <laughs> yeah, Susan, that foil lasts forever. I have a whole basket in my closet and I and that and I go to the store I'm like oh well I really don't need to buy any more foil because I I have it all don't forget to get a little duster Susan to keep the the uh, static and the dust off of them and keep your foil stored in the original containers because a lot of people take their foils out and it's the same thing as soon as you get your fingerprints and dust and stuff all over it then you get little marks in your foil I still can't believe that we hit 10,000. Lee and I were just talking about it last night. Like, we just did this for fun. So, I don't know if I told you guys, like, the actual backstory. Um, you know, most of you know, Leah's father and I, he has three children to his first marriage. And, obviously, we were together to have Leah. Um, but my stepchildren live pretty far away. Like, they're an hour and a half, two hours away. And they got kind of interested in my card making, the two oldest daughters, and um, we were, I was making these YouTube videos for fun for the kids to watch. Well, now they're older, one's at college, one's um, like in her junior year of high school, so they're not doing it as much, which is fine, um, but Leah and I continue to do it. Well, about two and a half years ago, I guess it's been three years? I think it's it's either two and a half or three years. Anyway, I got laid off from my previous job. And I basically sat on my butt for three months until I could figure out what I wanted to do, pick myself up, um, you know, and realize that one door, op one door closes so another one can open. So I really got into those three months working on my crafts. I was making a lot of cards, having fun with it. And it was the only thing that honestly I could get up and get myself to do every day um, until I found the job that I'm at now. So you guys have been so supportive. Some of you guys have been with me since the very beginning and just watching and asking questions. And a lot of us maybe saw some stuff on TV and YouTube or craft shows and we're like, hey, I don't know if that's something I want to buy and invest in. Hey, I have a budget to live on too. So seeing other people that could relate to me, not professional 
YouTube or card artists, not saying that those people aren't fabulous, but I got really intimidated watching some of those people. Like Christina Warner is amazing. I'll never be to Christina Warner standards. She's like a professional artist. Um, Sandy Alnock. Oh my God. Sandy Alnock's coloring. It's amazing. So I just started little by little and I felt like you guys were a support group for me to help me with my creative outlet and in turn I got to help you guys and say hey buy this don't buy that or I tried this and it was worth it or I tried this and it wasn't worth it and you guys are all have been so supportive of that so I appreciate every single one of you for for being here with me and watching these and liking them and sharing them and you guys are very honest with your opinions there have been videos where hey the camera was shaking all over the place it was too noisy in the background the lighting was terrible and I take all of your voices and I use them to try to improve things so I got a camera stand I got a little bit better lighting I've tried to make sure that nobody else is doing anything when I'm recording and things like that um, yeah, and I have no problem, Susan, showing you guys my mistakes because if I'm making the mistakes, that means other people are making the mistakes. And if I can save you some money, these craft supplies are not super cheap, especially when it comes to foiling, right? We all love foiling and we don't want to mess up our foiling. We want to hoard all of that stuff. We want to hoard our pretty paper. So if we can learn together, why not, right? All right, let's heat emboss this. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is what Jennifer McGuire was doing in her video yesterday. It looks like etched metal. And I know for you guys, it just looks raised. Believe me, she was right. She's the goddess, by the way, um, <laughs> when it comes to this stuff. She does all kinds of experimenting and stuff. This is so cool. It really does look like etched metal. I'm going to show you another way. And here's that other one on the shinier foil looks like ice oh so speaking of ice let me show you this other thing we're going to use vellum for this method okay so ultra thick embossing enamel what is it that's exactly what it is it's larger chunks of embossing powder okay there's a different way you need to heat this hi grace all right so we're going to do our anti-static tool all the way on the end of this and I'm gonna go direct to paper with my Versamark. And I'm gonna ink this whole thing up. I want it nice and sticky. This is where help, having a glass mat or a non-stick mat comes in handy. Like one of those silicone mats would be great. All right, now I'm gonna sprinkle the ultra thick embossing powder on here. Now this is vellum, so it's gonna be a little tricky. It looks like sugar. That's what it looks like. It's super thick. Now, what this is used for is to give a raised effect. Um, and I'm going to show you here. Think of glossy accents. When you heat this, you have to heat it from underneath. If you heat it from the top, it's going to blow all those particles off your desk. So we're going to heat it from the bottom. I'm going to give my heat tool a few seconds to heat up before I bring it to the paper. And you'll see it starting to melt. Oops, too hot. When it bubbles, that's too hot. You gotta move the heat tool away when it's too hot. See that curling? That's because we're trying to do this on vellum. Once you have it started, then you can go from the top. And I'm just holding my heat gun a little higher here, kind of moving it as I'm heating it.
forgot to tell you guys about a very important tool. You want to have a really good marker. Okay. Versa marker you want because when you're missing spots, the Versa marker comes in. All right, so what this did was it added a super extra thick coat of clear embossing powder onto this vellum. The reason I did it on vellum is I wanna show you guys a couple techniques. You guys have all used glossy accents. We love how glossy accents looks. We hate the drying time. This is instant glossy accents where you can use a Versa marker and say you wanna color in some windows, say you wanna color in some glasses, say you wanna color in some raindrops. You use the Versa marker and you go in with the ultra thick or you could do a couple coats of, of clear detail. We have clear detail. You can do a couple coats of this. This is just super thick. So in one coat, it gives you what two or three coats of the super detail would be. But I want to heat this one more time and I'm going to show you why. I want to show you this really cool technique. So I'm going to put this all back in the jar here real quick. Now, you can do it one of two ways. You can heat it again and then pour the embossing powder over it. I'm just going to um, make it sticky again with the Versa Mark ink. If you're really quick, you don't need the ink again. So as this um, heats and cools down, it's also getting a little more rigid. I know it's vellum. But there's a reason I chose this. So I'll show you guys this really cool technique here. And we're going to heat the heat tool from underneath. Started, it'll spread pretty quickly. It looks like snow melting. The less you heat it, the more bumpier it's going to be. The more you heat it, the smoother it's going to be. Again, you don't want to overheat it. You don't want to burn it. All right, we're going to give this a second to cool down. Actually, I'm going to put it away. I'll be right back. come back to that one in a second but another we're going to come back to there's a little technique I want to show you guys with that one but it needs to cool down oh man Susan now you can see every mistake that I tried to hide from you guys <laughs> I'm going to wipe my desk down okay how many of you guys have used faux um or done um what do they call those uh, seals? Initial seals. Hello, Anne-Marie. Okay, wax seals. So as you can see, Nancy, the stationary junkie, has wax seals. Now you can buy them in the store. And these are, you, you can, Hobby Lobby has these. You can just melt them down. Okay. What's this one? Looks like a little anchor. Ooh, I like this one. We're going to use that one. Okay. So the ideal is, you know, you, you melt down this wax and 
um, it makes a seal. Well, you can also do that with heat embossing. So I'm gonna show you on some black glossy paper here. We're gonna use our anti-static tool. Hello, Linda from Arizona. And we're gonna have our Versamark ready. We have our seal. You can use rubber stamps as well. I'm using a metal seal. And I'm gonna use some Hero Arts Gold, which actually is the same as the Simon Says Stamp Gold. It's exactly the same. Right, Anne-Marie? Me too. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to, where's my Versamark pen? We're just gonna make a little circle here with our Bursa mark. Okay, and with the rubber stamp, you would do the same thing. Now we're gonna put our gold embossing powder over it. And this is gonna take a couple of layers of heat embossing here. We're quick, we can catch it to two. Nope, not quick enough, Nance. All right, so we're gonna brush this off. You better go cut the grass and quit bothering me. I'm on live right now. Everybody say hi to Xavier. He used to be so cute when he used to stamp. Now all he does is play video games because he's a teenager. do about three or four layers here oh that's why you got to wait for it to uh dry because i just stuck my pen into that my scrap paper go see making mistakes with you guys <laughs> all right we're good all right let me do that a different way without using the pen. <laughs> We're just going to do it like this. It would have been fine if my son didn't come down and interrupt us. All I'm doing is just layering on more layers. All right, now we should be able to put our seal in here, hopefully. I'll give that a second. It's another trick I forgot to mention is that sometimes you want to do your heat embossing from underneath. The trick is to have even heat. So you want to heat from the top. You want to heat from the bottom. You don't want to be too close. Um, and then that will help your paper not to warp. Okay. And there you can see we have a faux wax seal from embossing powders. So, of course, I could have done it up here if I had done it right without stuck in my thing in there and then cut it out and I would have had a seal, right? Let's see if I can. You gotta be kind of quick about it. You wanna make sure that you don't 
let that embossing powder cool down. Another thing that helps is, oh, see it cooled down too fast there. Let's do one more layer here. I'm gonna do one more layer. Another thing that helps is to coat your stamp in Versamark before you stick it in the embossing powder. That way it doesn't stick. The Versamark kind of protects it. And then I could cut that out and no one would know that it's not a real wax seal. Well, it kind of is because it's like powdered wax, right? That's another method. Um, okay, was it Susan that asked me about adding glitter? Right, Susan, you said, can I just add glitter to my embossing powder? So the answer is no, but you can emboss with glitter. So I'm gonna show you that. Can you do me a favor? Can you go in the freezer and grab that little piece of paper I stuck in there for me? That's right, I said the freezer. All right, so I'm gonna grab some regular glitter. Glitter, glitter. Oh, here we go. We have some distressed glitter dust from Tim Holtz. All right, so I stuck this in the freezer. This was that ultra thick embossed piece that we did on vellum. Oh, there we go. And once it's fully cured, we can actually make ice. And how cool is that for those of you that like to do mixed media? And then all you do is you distress it so it looks like either broken glass or ice. For those of you that want to do mixed media or you make the winter cards, things like that that are coming up, it's just a cool way of making this kind of cracked look. Now with the vellum, it's peeling up a little bit, but I wanted to do the vellum so it would be clear underneath so you could see through it. Um, but if you did this on regular white paper and then inked over it, it looks really cool. And that's using the ultra thick. And all I did was it, you guys saw me heat it. I did it a couple times and then I went and stuck it in my little mini freezer. Okay. All right. Um, now moving on to glitter. All right. Glitter is a different story. So where's my samples here? Okay. We're going to anti-static this. All right. Now, in order to do glitter, you need two products. You need your glitter, but you also need what's called glue powder. You can get this from Ranger now. This one I have from PK Glitz. What this is, is, is a powdered glue that's heat activated. So heat activated glue powder. You have to be very quick when using this. Let me get my... Coffee filter out. Now I have tried using glue pads for glitter um, and eventually the glitter just kind of flakes off. So I like using heat embossing. If you can get it, use heat embossing glitter. It just is the best, you can't, can't miss it. But I know there are times where you just can't and you have glitter and you wanna use the glitter, right? Okay, so let's find, let's use this stamp again, our little cowboys. Now I'm gonna move pretty quickly here. I'm actually going to have my glitter open and I'm going to have my glue powder open. I've already done my anti-static tool. I'm gonna have my Versamark open. And what I'm gonna do is you're gonna see I have to move quick. I'm gonna stamp, I'm gonna put the glue powder on it, I'm gonna heat it, and then I'm gonna put the glitter on it. The glue powder turns into hot sticky glue and it allows the emboss or the, the glitter to stick to it. So if you don't have embossing powder with glitter, this is how you make your own. So I'm gonna stamp like I normally would. Then I'm gonna put the glue powder on. You have a second here because the Versamark again stays sticky. Okay. 
okay? Once I heat this, it's gonna automatically be activated and you don't have a lot of time. So I have my glitter ready to go. I have my coffee filter ready to go. And we're gonna start heating here. I'm gonna make sure my heat gun's nice and hot. Once that's heated, it is sticky. Now we have our own glitter embossing. Now I usually give this a second to cool down before I take a brush and clean all that extra glitter off because you don't wanna scrape it off of that glue powder. extra glue on there. I mean a lot of extra glitter on there. Okay, so there you can see for those of you who want to emboss with regular glitter, this is how you do heat embossing with regular glitter. Okay, so again that powder is called glue powder. You can get it from Ranger or pkglitz.com. I've had this one for a really long time. The Powder Keg Heat Activated Glue Powder. Powder Keg Embossing Powders.com. I don't know if they're still in business or not. Yes, sticky embossing powder. Okay, so I think I talked about most everything. Swiffers here. Swiffers clean up everything. You want to make sure you thoroughly clean all of this up because if you're going to be doing any foiling, you do not want any dust or embossing powders near your foiling. That is the enemy of foiling. So we did regular glitter embossing. We did, or sorry, glitter non embossing powder. We did embossing powder glitter. We did uh, pigment ink with clear. We did faux wax seals. We did faux ice. We did faux ice on mirror cardstock. We did faux metal etching on matte metal cardstock. What else did we do? Oh, we did black um, embossing with clear ink, or sorry, yes, black embossing with the black VersaFine ink. We did, oh, this was another one of the glitter embossing powders. We did a dye ink, and we, or this was the dye ink, and that was a pigment ink. So a lot of different ways that you can do embossing. Let me just check over my notes here. Hi, Patty, long time no see. Uh, I'm just checking over my notes. I think I went over everything with you. And then don't forget the basic tools that you need are a good little powder brush, a large powder brush, a little scoop, um, some coffee filters, some kind of anti-static tool, embossing buddy or bag will work. Um, if you're only going to have a couple of embossing powders to start out with, you want to have a couple of good inks. So you want to have, again, the Versa Mark ink, number one, first and foremost. You want to have Versa Fine Claire for black. You don't really need to buy black embossing powder. You can use that ink and use clear over it. Um, in terms of the colors, I would say... I endorse Brutus Monroe or Hero Arts or Ranger. They're all great. But Brutus Monroe has this really opaque white. The icicle is his clear. And then I always like a clear, a glitter, um, a sparkling glitter. Because, you know, this time of year we're making holiday cards. You're doing snowflakes and things like that. So these three would be what I would start out with. And then if you join the Brutus Monroe Embossing Powder Club, it's $8 a month. That includes shipping. Um, they send limited edition colors out and 
Um, you get them before everybody else gets them, before they're available on the public market. So it's a good way to build up your stash. And again, if you have um, pigment inks, you can heat emboss right over the pigment inks, like these Versifying Claire inks, you can heat right over them. Distress Oxide inks, you can heat right over. Distress Oxide inks, I mean Distress inks, they stay wet for a really long time. If you have regular dye ink pads like Lawn Fawn or Stampin' Up or Close to My Heart, those you can also emboss over, but you want to double stamp it with um, Versa Mark ink over it and then use clear embossing powder over top of it. And then don't forget your specialty inks. You can also heat emboss because these are, these are actually really cool when you heat emboss over them because it looks raised um, with the clear embossing powder, but you don't really need any kind of specialty, um, embossing powder to do those. So just some tips and trick for you guys. Um, if there's any questions that I can answer for you guys, post them down below. Again, this was just a kind of a request video from questions that I was getting from you guys on embossing. If there's anything I missed, please let me know. I'll be happy to go over it with you guys next time. Yes, thank you for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, you want to click that link that's going to pop up in the bottom right-hand corner. And we're going to be doing 10,000 subscriber giveaway very, very soon. We're waiting for some more products to come in, and then we're going to have some fun. So thank you guys so much for supporting us. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.